Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarsen Zero, and today I'm joined by Blind Oracle, Azure Wolf, Train Rex, and Longfish. Together we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons and Dragons. This is the second encounter on the Mountain of the White Dragon, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, abilities, spells, items in hand. Wizard. I am at 102 hit points, four first level slots, two second level slots, two third level slots, one fourth level slot, two fifth level slot, one sixth level slot, four charges on the Wand of Magic Missile. Simulacrum. Four first level slots. Two second level slots, two third level slots, one fourth level slot, two fifth level slots, one sixth level slot. He is at 35. Rogue, 136 out of 139 hit points, holding a plus one short bow using plus one arrows. Instrument of the Bards on my back. Fighter. 115 out of 166 hit points. Still has his great axe and the javelin. Cleric. Currently at 118 out of 137 hit points, holding Staff of the Python and Shield plus two. I have four level one, one level two, three level three, two level four, two level five, and one level seven spell slots remaining, and both of my channel divinity. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. This encounter has two abominable yetis. Abominable yetis have a 40 foot move and a 40 foot climb. They are immune to cold. Old. They have dark vision, a passive perception of 15 with a maximum of 25. They fear fire, so if you hit them with fire damage, they have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks until the end of their next turn. They have keen smell, so they have advantage on perception checks. And they have camouflage, so if they're in snowy terrain, they can make dexterity checks with advantage. Multi-attack, so that they can use their chilling gaze and make two claw attacks. They can target one creature they can see within 30 feet. They have to make a con save or take cold damage and then be paralyzed, unless they're immune to cold. They also have a cold breath, which recharges on a six. It's a 30 foot cone for a constitution save or 10 d8 cold damage, which is gonna be fun. The terrain for this is mostly difficult terrain. There's some difficult terrain in yellow, and then the orange is climbable with no checks. Most of you will climb at a half speed. Yetis will climb at climb speed. Any questions about terrain? To the north, it's looking down, or is it level with the other side there? Yeah, so that's a drop. It's 10 feet down there, and it's 10 feet down there, and it's another 10 feet down there, so 20 feet over here. Tactics. Anybody have any ideas for tactics in this fight? Hit it with fire. Yep. How do they feel about lightning? They like it the same way they like any other type of damage, which means they don't like it. Hit it with fire, hit it with axes, hit it with lightning. He's the fighter, and this is probably a round for the fighter to action surge type thing to do a burn over round. Yeah, I don't think we can block, actually just check them at the choke point because they can just climb over that cliff. Should you guys fly again? Probably not on this one because this one's one where I probably want to concentrate on something else versus that burrow attack coming up and eating somebody. Oh, I had a thought. I mean, we probably should head to the end of that choke point before dispersing. I guess we just focus fire the closest one, see if we can just take it down before the other one gets there. I could try to burn two fires, like two fire bolts at the start here. All right, let's go ahead and roll initiative then. Anybody have higher than a 20? The rogue has a 21. I have a 20. Anybody have between a 20 and a 15? 17, wizard. Anyone have between a 15 and a 10? 14 on the fighter. 12 on the bird. What do you got for me, cleric? Three minus one. Rogue, you're up first. I would like to move one north and then northwest spot on the diagonal from the simulacrum. Bonus action hide, 25, and then we'll pop out and take a shot at the Yeti to the north. Does a 21 hit. 21 connects with the Yeti. Not bad. 42 points of damage. After the rogue, we go to the Yetis. So this Yeti is going to move. Everybody is within his 30-foot blast. So he's going to cold breath on you. It's a 30-foot cone of frigid air. Each creature, which is everyone, makes a DC 18 constitution save. 35 points of cold Cold damage on a failure, 17 points of cold damage on a success. 19. 18 on the nose. A 9 for the rogue. A 17 for the fighter, and the boots half that. 18 for the simulacrum. I'm not even going to bother with the owl because he's about to die. So the owl is toast. Can I get the rogue's uh, final damage so I can put that on me? Haft and haft or no? It's just resistance once. You can only have one type, so you're going to take 35, so you're going to have that. You're going to take 17, and the cleric is also going to take 17. Second yeti is going to move as a dash action. After the Yeti is the Asia Wolf. Big guy on the left been hit, right? That's correct. He's my first target. I'm rolling a Firebolt, 17 on the die. Hits. 
10 points of damage, plus 5, so 15. The order is with the simulacrum to follow up with a firebolt on the one to the right. Oh, that's a crit. 35 plus 5, 40. That moves to the west with the simulacrum. To confirm, the second one went to the guy on the right. Correct. I was basically splitting it to give both of them disadvantage. After that, we're going to go to the train wrecks. It's a little too far. We're going to move about halfway between to the east. Can't reach either of them from here, but I can throw that javelin, I think. A 19 to hit. Hits. A two on the die. Seven points of damage. Plus 46 lightning. Plus 14. Seven and 14 is 21. And that javelin's at the Yeti now. After that, we're going to go to the longfish. Move me diagonal northeast one. Chuck a scroll of flame strike at the Yeti down the hill. Tell me about it. Creates a 10 foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder centered on one point within range. It's got 60 feet. Each creature in the cylinder must take a dexterity saving throw. Fails. It takes 46 fire and 46 radiant. Can we burn them? That's the question. 15 fire damage, 21 radiant damage. After that, we're going to go to the top of the order, Blind Oracle. Bonus action hide, 25, roll to attack, 30 to hit. Hits. For 36 points of damage. After that, we go to the Yeti. I think Train successfully stopped it, so it would have to move around you. It's only going to be able to get trained. Good move. Goes there and blasts a cone of cold, hitting its partner, but its partner's immune to cold, so it doesn't matter. Train, go ahead and make a DC 18 constitution save. 20. 31, which you're going to avoid with a constitution save, so that's going to send it down to 15. You have Boots of the Winter Lens, which gives you resistance to cold, so that'll send that down to a 7. This Yeti is going to try to do the same thing. It's going to fail to recharge. It's been hit with fire damage, so it's got disadvantage on its attacks. Yeti is going to climb to there. It's going to use its chilling gaze on the simulacrum. Simulacrum, give me a DC 18 constitution save. For all the marbles. 18? Chilling gaze fails. It has two claw attacks. It's going to take those against the simulacrum. First one is a 27 to hit. With disadvantage, right? So with disadvantage, I'm sorry. I rolled two dice and picked the higher. Got a 13 to hit you. The shield, I mean? A shield. Second attack is a aberrant 20. Oh yeah, so shield isn't going to do anything to do that. 18 points of slashing damage and 6 points of cold damage, 24 total. Is Simulacrum still up? No, he's gone. Azure Wolf, you're up. Well, that pissed me <laughs> off. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Yeti. I hear you don't like fire. Not so much, no. Fire bolt is the option here. Okay, a disadvantage because of the proximity. Yep. So I drop a nat 20 for a 20. 20 hits. 10 on that eye. And they have disadvantage on attacks and ability checks. Anything else? That's it. Train racks. All right. I'm going to attack the Yeti next to me. 16. 16 hits. Cool. That's 18 slashing. 27 to hit. Hits. 14 slashing. And last one, 17 plus 12. Hits. 11. Lethal. I move back towards the other area if I could be able to hit him from the cliffside. After the train is the longfish. Sacred flame. Did X 18? I rolled a 19. All right, nothing. After the longfish is the blind oracle. Nah, there's no good way to do this. Hide, move back, because it can't take an oppie while I can't see you. Let's do that. Hide and move to the corner. Does a 19 hit the Yeti? Yep. For 39 points of damage. Lethal. Report hit points. 118 out of 139. 91 out of 166. 84 out of 137. 94 out of 112. Any pre-rest actions? Did we rest between the last encounter and this one? You did not. This is going to be the first short rest you've taken. Okay, then no. Hit dice. 3, 4, 18. Spending 3 and getting 30. Spending 4 for 35 total healed. Spending 3 to recover 21. After defeating the Yetis, the adventurers are going to continue their way up the mountain. Two encounters down, four more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Sarson Zero, and I will see you next time.